Hi, it's Bridget. Kind of deep in contemplation this morning. And I'm kind of in this zone, so I didn't want to wreck it by like going and like getting makeup on and all that. It's an earlier, it's earlier in the morning and it's a kind of a cloudy, rainy, a little bit rainy. It feels, there's human and it feels calming to me. So I'm in this state and I, right away when I went and I heated up my coffee, is it coffee? Mm-hmm. A mug my husband made for me, isn't that cute? Oh, isn't that so sweet? Yeah. I'm definitely an emotional support human. That's how it feels. It's like, this is like the anthem for the empaths, heart-based people who are really sensitive, right? And I'm trying to kind of own that now. I'm just allowing myself to embody that. I am just very sensitive. And by that, I mean, I'm in tune. How about that? Instead of saying, I'm very sensitive, it sounds like, oh, it's like, I'm not really, oh, I'm more like, oh, (laughs) I'm in tune to energy, right? Yeah, you too. (laughs) Yeah, right? That's why you're watching me. That's why you're watching Bridget. Hey, right? Okay, we get it. We get it. I get you. You get me. Good. So I'm going to have a a contemplation conversation here. I want to um, talk with Robin Williams. I'm going to ask him some questions. I went in to heat up my coffee and I could see him. I'm like, who could I talk to about this? And this is the kind of conversation that I have with myself, (laughs) by myself, and I don't record for you. And I think some people are kind of like, I wonder, like, how does it work for you, Bridget, on Above Life channel? Like, do you just, are you, you know, do you just drive around or are you always followed by spirits and spirits just pop into the car when you're there or that kind of thing? It's like, no, I usually have very healthy boundaries. Just so you know, boundaries, that's why like when people meet you and if they find out you're psychic, they're like, oh, tell me something. It's like, it doesn't work like that. (laughs) But not for me. I'm like, nope, boundaries. And then that even like pushes me back more like, oh boy, (laughs) no, 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 no. It would be quite a long conversation for us to get to the point where I could even look at your energy, to be honest. I'm not going to like be like a doctor and like start digging in your energy right there. I'm not going to whip out my hair cutting scissors and my razor thing to shave your head on the sides and cut your hair in the middle of the grocery store the first time I meet you at a party. (laughs) But let's be honest, I don't go to parties. (laughs) And half in tune, right? You guys know that. You probably don't either. Uh It takes a lot to get me there. Usually some libations so that I can calm myself down to get there. But anyway, 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 I digress. So today I wanted to talk to, I wanted to talk about this feeling of like just, I don't want to say overwhelm because that's so overused. Gosh, don't you hate that, you guys? Like all the words that we would normally use in our conversations, it just seems overused so much that I just, I can't even stand the word. Like I'm like, overwhelmed, sensitive. They're true, but I'm like, (laughs) oh, for those of you listening are gonna just hate that. Sorry, sorry about that. I forget that I'm liked. Hmm. That wasn't a pleasant sound, sorry, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> but funny nonetheless so I'm gonna chat with Robin Williams I'm gonna let you guys watch now I'm not sure where I'm gonna share this video so I have two YouTube channels I have above life channel where I do afterlife celebrity stuff and Sunday morning coffee my podcast <clears throat> oops I did it again sorry sorry and I have Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. Fairy Grasshopper is the channel that I share all sorts of stuff, intuitive, about my psychic life. I talk about energy and angels and I do, I use tools like cards or um, crystals and all different kinds of stuff. I talk about all different kinds of intuitive stuff, the elements, and animal totem, I mean everything. I speak a lot of different languages when it comes to spirituality, psychicness, intuition I mean you got it energy yep it's like I'm like the target like the super target you know like I got all of it the groceries the awesome beauty the clothes oh I really should go to target actually okay get back on track Bridget 
I'm going to talk to Robin. Robin, 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 Robin. What do I do here? I am, I am going through it. And I'm going to share it. And I can't, I mean, I can believe that I'm sharing it because I'm very authentic, like I share. But I might cry, you guys. If you don't like that, if you don't like emotions, if emotions are hard for you, chances are you're an empath. And you don't like mine because you don't want to feel your own. I know because I am that person. I am that person. I don't like other people's emotions. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not actually. I've been, I've been much better at that in my life in the last 10 years. You have kids and you kind of get used to that. And, oh, I see a rabbit out here. I'm super distracted. He's like, that's called avoidance, Bridget. Robin Williams, he looks like a, it's so funny, he like has these little glasses on, these little um, very like thin wiry glasses that are like silver, and he's like, now tell me, in this avoidance, how long has this been going on? Almost like a doctor psychiatrist, <laughs> like, yes, my whole life, thank you, Robin. <laughs> yes, well, you're very good at it, thank you. Wait, is that a compliment? <laughs> we are going to have some giggles because it's easier to laugh than it is to cry. So what's going on in my life right now is, oh boy, here it comes, the rain, tears. The most important part of my life for the last many years is coming to a change point. Two years ago, my oldest child went to college, left the house. That was tough. My only girl, too. I got one girl and like three boys. Okay, so the girl, that was tough. It's still hard after all this viral stuff, the virus stuff, and then she ended up having to take a semester off school. And I'm like, dude, school's not for everybody. Maybe you should do something else. like. Go get a job at Disney so I get discounts. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm seriously like, come on, come on. You know, somebody got to do that. <laughs> so my heart is, has been with her throughout this last time and her struggles during the pandemic. And so, I mean, oh my gosh, you guys, we had to move her home in the middle of the year. It was like tra tragic because when they announced the closings last year, she was actually home on spring break and then they couldn't go back and then they could go back and then they thought they were going to stay and then they couldn't and nobody was there and it was all this weird stuff and everybody it was like a, she said it was like a prison and so I had to go get her and I mean it was just this whole and then there was like two months of like deer in the headlights and how do you do online school and the professors didn't know how to do it and neither did I mean it was just awful experience for her major life experience and then my son, next in line right now, graduating. I don't know who to look at, the camera, or because yeah, I'm talking to you guys, but I, I'm talking to Robin because I want to talk and have, I need this therapy session with Robin Williams. It's my therapy session. You guys can watch. You voyeurs. Voyeurs, is that right? Okay. This is how it works, you guys. This is really how it works in private, okay? So my son is graduating. We just went and looked at the banners. They put the banners for all the seniors. It's like 300 of them, okay? Lots of seniors. On the fence in one of the fields, right on like the main highway, you know, so everybody can see it. And at the middle school, kind of like right on the main road. And we went and looked at the banners and found his banner and took a picture of him by his banner. Well, they've been doing the banners the last two years because last year during that pandemic in full swing, deep swing, like nobody was in school at all. Right now they're in hybrids. So they go two days a week, the high school kids. And then nobody could. So they had to kind of, everybody had to kind of come up with creative ideas on how to let the seniors have their senior year. You know, like that's a major milestone part of your life. Like you're going to remember that for, don't you guys remember? Good or bad. Okay, let's just be honest. <laughs> like 
Like when I went my high school graduation, I had a big class. It was like 800 plus kids that graduated. 800 in my graduating class. I went to a bigger school, right? And the kids on both sides of me at graduation that sat next to me, I didn't. I never met them. I had no idea who they were. One of them was in like the post-secondary college classes already, and the other one I just I didn't never met. I don't know who they were. So different experiences for everybody, right? And I was ready to get out of high school. I just wanted to get on with my life and get out into the world and figure out stuff. That's what I want. I just wanted to get out of high school and be out into the world. Everybody's different though. And my son is very sentimental. And so he's feeling this like, oh my gosh, now I'm not gonna have my soccer team anymore. I'm not gonna have the track team anymore. I'm not gonna have my good friends that I, we exercise and we go work out in the mornings, like early, crazy kid stuff. What the heck? And my 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 buddies at that work at the store that I work at, and we all kind of you know unload the trucks and stock the shelves together, kind of thing. And like his whole life is just like a huge part of his life that he's finally gotten comfortable in this pattern routine and has support structures and things. It's totally going to be in the rearview mirror, and that is really scary for him. It's not so scary for me. I'm like, dude, you are made for this. You are ready for this. This is gonna happen. You can do this. And he's going away to a Big Ten school. He got scholarships. Thank God he got scholarships. I have four kids. Like, and I don't make a lot of money doing this. Let me just be clear. I love my work. I love my private sessions, but it's not. <laughs> I think people have misperceptions about YouTubers. I'm not a YouTuber. I am a person with an entrepreneurial business, and I utilize YouTube to share and build relationships and connect with people that can get to know me and might want to work with me, and I might want to work with too. And I enjoy this platform. I enjoy it very, very much. And But it's not my... <laughs> It's not like money, money, money. Like people really think it is, you guys. It's not. At least not. I don't have a million subscribers. If I had 100,000 subscribers, yes. Wouldn't that be awesome? Then maybe I, I could actually make money just doing videos. That'd be cool. But that's not my goal. Like that's not my intention. That's not really on my radar. Just let's just be clear. But I'm so proud of him for he worked so hard in school. And... He wants to be an architect. That's what he thinks he wants to be. He's got this great math brain and the science brain, but he's super good with like woodworking and stuff. Like he had this wood, this shop class with woods and he made these beautiful, I was just like, oh my God, he's so gifted, like furniture. And I'm like, how, how did you even make this? He's like, oh, well, you know, I'm like, oh. Like design, I mean, complicated designs. And the shop teacher was like, hey, if you want to come in early or you want to change this to make it, you know, more what you want to do, like more complicated, basically, you can. Like it, I mean, he just, he loved it and he was great. He's great at it, you know. So I, t I try to tell him, like, he's going away to college. And I want him to pursue his dreams and whatever that is. And I, but I also am telling him at the same time, Hey, if it doesn't work out at college, because it's not for everybody, I just don't want him to feel like he's stuck because he got a scholarship for the architecture, you know? I'm like, you're not stuck. You can always change, adjust course, take a break, come home, whatever you want to do. Like, I'm not homesick for him, but he's going to be homesick. Like, my oldest, she's like, whatever, man. She couldn't wait to get out, you know? Like, me, I understood that. I'm like, yes, go, have a great time. Do do the do the stuff, but still be responsible. We're working on the responsibility part with her because that's a struggle, a worry for me. She tries to be responsible, but, you know, it's tough. When you've grown up in this, like, weird time and not knowing which end is up and... You can't get a job or people, you get a job and then you get laid off, but you don't get unemployment and then you can't pay your bills and pay your rent and your mom is on your lease. Holy, I want to swear, but I'm not going to. It's been stressful, you guys, it's been stressful. I love my kids. And this part of my life is hard. 
and it's amazing because they get to now do it. Like they get to now really have more of their own independent choices without me, like, like without feeling like they have any pressure for me. Because the pressure they feel for me, like my son said yesterday, he's like, mom, I can tell you're stressed out. I did a video on fairy grasshopper about crying because I cried like two weeks ago and I keep crying because everything's at the surface and it's about release right now I'm letting myself feel the feelings so that I don't keep them inside and eat them and get sick or lose a lot of weight because that's what I did when my daughter went to college I lost a lot of weight you probably noticed on the Love Life channel but I didn't talk about it because when you are also trying to make a living <laughs> if you're a life coach and you present like you're breaking down or falling apart sometimes people are like oh I can't work dude she's too she has too much going on to work with me I'm like no I exactly need to work with you because it reminds me of all these great tools and it helps center and ground me and I can step right into my work and just do my work amazing amazing I can do it <clears throat> so the change this is a different time I'll have two kids that are out of the house and at least temporarily. Who knows when they come back in the summer, right? <laughs> or for the holidays. And I'm super okay with them not being here or living with me. But I want them to then manage their stuff. Manage their own finances. Manage their own choices. Manage, you know, I want them to call me when they need to talk through things. Not call me to tell them what to do. You know, that kind of thing. It's like... If you have kids, you probably know this. And if you have older kids, it's like they only call you when there's a crisis. It's like, although I'm working on that, I've been working on that a lot with my daughter over the last year and a half. It's like we do check in with each other and we talk almost every day just on text just to see how she's doing. And she texts me and we do funny stuff like gifts back and forth, like funny images and pictures. And we just are silly, you know, just so that we... So she knows she's not alone because it's very isolating, especially in the college town when everybody goes home and it's still the pandemic stuff. It's still weird and it's just, it's weird, you know. Her friends aren't there because a lot of people left and they never came back to the school. They never came back. They went to online school and some of them are like transferring schools and it's like, why spend so much money for expensive college when doesn't even make sense to do that because you're getting just an online education with professors that are not used to teaching online so they're quite frankly not good at it they really aren't I was like excuse me this is a college class I was like what the heck this person is awful awful I mean I don't want to blame that person because that's not their skill set that's not the job they took you know but geez wow lots I'm like Right away, I'm like, Robin, I can't share this video. This is a big deal. Maybe I'll share it with my private, my private group that I work with. <clears throat> he says, how do you feel? I feel good now. A little bit better than I did. I feel good after I cry, you guys. I feel like this release. It feels like <sighs> I can breathe again. It's like crying releases the emotion. I said, yes, it does. He says, because emotion must flow. <laughs> so Robin, why are you the one that I feel connected to with emotions? Like, why are you the expert? It says, well, because I felt them the most. Maybe, maybe it's because I felt them the most. He says, I felt them the most. You could see the range of my emotions. I really worked with them. I harnessed them. I used them. He's like, I resourced them and put them into my work, he says. But I don't feel manic. 
Like that's not how my stress w looks. Like you kind of looked manic a bit at times. He said, that's how your brain operates. He said, your brain has to, he says, your brain has to process the emotion. See, that's the thing he says. People do not understand this. He says, I wish there was a way to, to just give you this yellow pill and you take it and your brain, you understand the, 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 the connection between the, the brain and the heart because there is a connection. And, and the heart really, it really isn't about a choice of follow your mind or follow your heart. It's, it's, a, it's an understanding. He's like, it's, a, it's, that, it's this bond between them that they don't even understand. He said, it's like a relationship where there's this attraction between the mind and the heart. He's showing me this attraction, but it doesn't understand. It's like an oil and water almost kind of, it doesn't mix very well, you know, it doesn't mix at all actually. He says, but that's just on the surface. He says, that's just what's on the surface, but that's not really true. And then he's showing me like this big breath and this like, oh, breathe in the heart, breathe in the belly, the low, low belly, just breathe in the energy from the belly, and the solar plexus and your spirit chakra, your spirit energy. <clears throat> Your soul lights up the heart and helps to light the way for the relationship or the connections from the heart to the mind. He's like, this is the magic. He said, this is the magic. He's like Merlin. He literally looks like he's a magician, like he has a big... Oh, you know what he looks like? Oh. <laughs> you know, okay. There's these machines that you can see like at, you know... I don't know, arcades and stuff or like on a boardwalk or whatever that have this like Alcazar guy that is like this, this fortune teller guy that like sits like this genie almost that has this big turban head and a hat and then this like big crystal and this mustache and he looks like the um, the guy on Aladdin, the evil guy on Aladdin the movie. And Disney references, shocker from Bridget. <clears throat> oh, but Aladdin. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he literally shows me like the bad guy in Aladdin. Yes, yes, I, what is his name? I can't think of his name. Put his name in the comments below if you know it. I wanna say Alcazar, but I don't think that's right. But he, um, that's what he's showing me. Like fortune teller telling the future. <laughs> All powerful, mighty genie. Oh my gosh, we're all a genie in a bottle, baby. <laughs> we are all that. What if we are? What if we are? And our three wishes would be for the mind, the heart, and the soul. To be connected and to be supportive of one another while we are humans in a body. And we've got the whole shebang, the mind, the heart, the soul, and the body. And that's the simple, that's the simple um, model that I work with when I work with clients in sessions, when I'm doing um, workshops or classes or online groups and stuff. It's always mind, heart, body, soul. And that the body is this container this beautiful sacred space it's not like put a cap on it container but it's like a bottle it's like the genie bottle and the goal isn't to get out necessarily the goal is to get in because when you get in then the bottle disappears there's no bottle it just expands and unfolds and the universe just boom open we're just open that's the freedom we seek, he says. That's the freedom you seek is this openness, but it comes through being within. But it's not just one part, he says. It's not one facet of you. That's the thing. It's not just your brain, intelligence. It's not just your heart and the feeling. It's not just your spirit and the spiritual realms of things and the knowings and the planning for the future because you just know everything. And it's not your body and your physical endurance or your, your youthfulness. He's like, it's not just one thing. It's all of it that's where you get freedom when it's all connected that is freedom he's like that's when it's expanded when there's no no walls no barriers no borders no need for the protection and the separation 
to be able to manage and control each of the parts. It's not about controlling the parts, it's about the flow, he said. Like in your heart, he says, like in your heart. He literally like reaches out like E.T. Big Finger. He literally shows me, <laughs> I love his movie references. He's like E.T.'s Big Finger and touches my heart. You know E.T.? You guys know the movie E.T., right? E.T.? And his Big Finger, E.T. phone home and all that, his Big Finger and he, right here, like in your heart, he says, right here, it lights up on the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. I feel better in this therapy session with Robin Williams. Maybe we should have more of them, you guys. I could just see it now. A series on Above Life Channel. Therapy with a celebrity in the afterlife via Bridget. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. This might have to go on Fairy Grasshopper because it's very personal. And the people on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel actually like me as a person. Like they care about my stuff, you know, they like my vibes. Not just They're not just here for celebrity only stuff. So maybe I'll have to share it there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's not a dig on Above Life Channel people. Above Life Channel, I love you guys. You guys are awesome too. But there's just a different level of me relationship with the people on Fairy Grasshopper because I can like interact with them and talk with them and comment with them. And maybe it's because it's a little smaller group. I don't know. Maybe not. It's probably just because I can do whatever I want there. And it's not niched as much as Above Life Channel is. So I have a little more creative freedom there. Right? So try to be organized. All right. <sighs> Thank you. He says, oh, don't mention He's like, yeah, don't mention it. Don't mention it. It's like Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, sunny. <laughs> Like with all the, like puts the pie on her, on his face. And so it looks like cold cream. He's like, yes. Oh, oh, oh Sunny. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> I love Robin Williams, don't you? Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps you. And guess what? You get to know me a little bit. Yes, you do. Don't, you don't have to feel bad. If you're an empath, you might feel sorry for me or feel bad or worry about me. Don't. This is, this is human. This is how we be people. We feel our emotions. We don't, we don't shy away from them. We don't resist. We don't focus our emotion outward on other people's situations so that we don't feel our own situation. If you're feeling bad for people across the globe and other places, it means you're not dealing with something within yourself. First, okay, you got to deal with something within yourself. Don't use other people's emotions like what I just shared with you as an excuse for you not to feel your own. Like it's supposed to empower you to feel your own. Like I feel better right now. Like that's what therapy does. That's what counseling does. That's what social work social workers can do for you. If you don't, you haven't had the right experience, then keep shopping around. Okay, it's like a relationship, man. Find someone that fits, you know, same with coaches. I have a feelings coach and I have a counselor that I work with. So and I need that and I deserve that and I want to care about for myself. And so I'm going to use those things that are resources. That's part of my support network. In addition to friends that I reach out to and say, hey, I need some prayers. I need a little extra mom love right now. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Can you send me some love? And then they will. You know, but I ask, that's where the power is. You ask for what you need. You actually make the effort to get the support that you need. If you are not willing to do that, then I don't know who can help you then. You got to get to a place where you ask for support instead of redirecting and deflecting and focusing on other people's issues because you're not dealing with your own. If you're digging in other people's issues, or you're trying to get other people to need you, that's a deflection inside you. You have stuff that you're resisting and you're not feeling or dealing with. You have old patterns. If you got to step in and control other people's lives, that's a problem. That's a huge problem. It's, it's saying, hey, you're avoiding yourself. You're not being in your body. You're not dealing with your home stuff. Quite frankly, that's just true, you guys. So I hope this video has, has given you some thought provoking content especially with Robin Williams he's amazing go ahead and have your own therapy session with Robin Williams he's quite qualified because he's been through it all so this is Bridget thanks so much for watching I appreciate you thanks for being here